word bug has a very specific meaning for me. It doesn't bother me so much anymore when other people say bug to refer to all insects. A bug to me, it's a large grouping of insects, and what they have in common is mouth parts that form a beak or a straw that they stab into either a plant or another insect and then suck the juices out and that's how they get their nutrition. So not all insects are bugs. But if you know that, then I don't get upset when you say bug to me. Kiwi was a gift from one of our friends who was keeping her in his office and felt like she wasn't getting enough attention. She wasn't getting the respect she deserves. And he knew that we have lots of people that come and visit our museum, so he thought she would be happier here. So the Essig Museum is the collection of insects, spiders, and other arthropods here at the University of California. We have over five million specimens, but we don't know exactly how many because we haven't made anybody count them all yet. Our collection includes species mostly from Western North America. So for the specimens entering the museum, they first have to go through our minus 80 degree freezer and they stay there for about three days. So they'll sit in here in a frozen state waiting for me to thaw them out and stick a pin in them. up in a rural part of Connecticut. We had lots of forest behind us. I just loved nature growing up. But it wasn't until my very last year of my undergraduate career that I took a class in entomology and just fell in love with it. And it all really started with this one class and one professor that got, got me very excited about it. So I talked to the professor ahead of time. I said, I'm going to take your class this fall. He said, well, that's great, but you're going to have to do a big collection. You might want to start on it over the summer. So I said, okay, I don't really know how to do that. You know, how, you know, can you give me some tips? He said, well, this summer I'm going to have some of my graduate students over and, and we're going to do some collecting. Would you like to join us? So I went over to his house. He lived in this beautiful wooded area of Connecticut and we had all these lights hanging, ultraviolet lights shining on these, these bed sheets. And I thought, oh, this is strange. What's, what's going on here? And, and we'd walk up to the sheets and there'd be all these different kinds of insects, beetles and moths and, and flies and wasps. and the graduate students were telling me this thing feeds on that and, and that's a parasite of, of this other thing and this thing only flies this time of year and I said man if this is entomology I'm in. So these days I spend most of my time studying moths and that's not something I suspected that I would do but it is one of the reasons I came to UC Berkeley because we have a lot of great people here and a great collection with moths. My latest project is in Indonesia on the island of Sulawesi and this project is a collaboration with a number of vertebrate biologists as well. So we're looking at reptiles, amphibians, birds, small mammals, spiders, and insects. So I kind of get to look at all my favorite things all in one place. We're looking at elevational gradients. We're going up a mountainside and looking at how things change as you move up the mountain, how species change, how the habitats change. And this is important in terms of climate change. So if the climate is getting warmer, to maintain their preferred habitats, the insects will have to move further up the mountain. But at some time, they reach the top of the mountain, and where do they go from there? So it's important to understand where things are now, and as the environment changes, whether it's climate, land use, or whatever else, uh, we know what was there and how it's changing over time. So that's part of the research I do. To be honest though, for me, a big part of it is just the discovery. To go to a place that nobody has collected these species before and, and feel like I'm the first one to see this species. And I, I can't even explain how exciting that is. For most people, when they think about insects, they think about mosquitoes, cockroaches, the yellow jackets that come to their picnic, the ants that get into their food. And that's sort of the, the, the negative side of, of insects, which is unfortunate. 
that's not what I see. Yes, I do see those things. I don't like being bitten by mosquitoes. I don't like ants in my food, but that's just such a small part of my world. When I'm out there, even if it's a backyard, it doesn't have to be a jungle in the middle of Indonesia. There's just so much more that's out there. There are all of the, the other kinds of bees that are pollinating, all the other kinds of moths that we just don't see during the day, all of the other insects that are living very secretive lives that, that we just don't notice unless we look. Because we can see them, they're there. We just have to look for it. And that's what I would like people to do is just take the second to stop and look. Because if we walk through the environment, we're disturbing everything that's going on. The birds stop singing, the, the bees will fly away, the spiders will run away and hide. And if we stop and just wait 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, everything starts up again. So we just have to sit still and let life come back. <laughs>